Peace family. Job here. Solo. Come on, come on. Solo Dolo. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing what it took to fly my boy out from the US to Nairobi, Kenya. All right, so, um, essentially what I found is around the time of COVID, most airlines stopped, most airlines stopped uh, flying pets. And with an exception of two airlines, Turkish Airlines and Alaska Airlines. So what this, what this caused was, you know, as you're looking online, most of the, most of the data is outdated in terms of if you're looking for insight on how to fly your pet. Uh, there is the, the pet agency route, but I will share, it depends on what you, you would like. Um, pet agencies, they, they do a good job. You know, they, it's full service. It's what they're dedicated to. They specialize in flying pets to different locations throughout the world. So you will have 24 seven monitoring on the flight. You'll have uh, someone constantly checking on them. Their job is to make sure that your pet is safe. Uh, that also comes with a price. I called a few agencies during this time and the quote, the quotes I got was, was, was the average was about $7,700. $7,700, dollars $7, to get your pet from Texas to Nairobi, Kenya. All right, so, uh, so that was the quote I got and we ended up spending about, actually, let me get the exact number. We spent about $2,346. $2, and that includes um, a one-way ticket. That includes a passenger, one passenger, a one-way ticket from the US to Nairobi, Kenya. All right, and let me break down that cost. So there are a few different requirements. There's the US Embassy's requirements. There's, there's Europe's requirements, passing through Europe. Um, there, there's not, the Kenyan Embassy's requirements. And then there's the airline requirements. Um, and each of these you have to abide by. So if any pa pet is passing through Europe, it must be microchipped. As a result, you have to account for microchipping, which will run you about $68. There's also dewormer, which is something you, you should typically people already do on a six month basis for their pets, which will run you about $30. Then there's a shot called Parbolecto, which I believe includes about three different. Uh, it's a vaccination against three different viruses. I don't remember the exact names of the virus, but that'll run you Parbolecto. That shot will run you about $47. Then there's rabies shot, if you haven't already, which is $36.77. I'm gonna make the assumption that uh, you, the viewer, has done none of these, and I'll give you a total based on that. So there's also the health certificate. I believe it's provided by either USDA or USADA, something like that. It'll require you to, once you get the checkup, the vet will have to ship something, ship documentation of the checkup to, to USDA. Um, it's called the US, USDA, USADA endorsement. And they, they provide you with a health certificate. Um, there's, a, there's a national health certificate and international health certificate. With you traveling internationally, You'll be required. You'll be required to to get the international health certificate, and that is probably the most expensive thing. It's about two hundred seventy-five dollars in terms of the uh, veteran vet appointment. So, so in total, the the vet. Let's say you have to do all of these, um, including the USDA endorsement for overnight shipping, and for shipping, that'll add. That'll add at a cost of $50. So that'll run you at about $506 just for the vet appointment. Now, the health certificate expires. I believe based on the destination, 
So for Kenya, I believe it's about 10, 10 days, something like that. So you have to have your checkup and have your flight and have your arrival all within 10 days or else the certificate will expire and your pet will be rejected. Okay, so all that is about $500. $506. Then we have your own or the passenger, whoever the passenger may be. We have their uh, their plane ticket, which will run you, can run you, let's say on the low end, about $700. In addition, they will charge a fee specifically based on weight. The airlines will uh, for the pet, which is another approximately six six seven hundred dollars what else what else we got here so usually it's the day before departure or the day of departure you could pay the fee um, at the terminal with Turkish Airlines and the other requirement they have specifically is the crate the crate has to be a good sized crate it has to be one in which your dog could stand up and be comfortable. So the crate for me was about $300 from Amazon. A, a good, large size crate. Okay. So there's your, your plane ticket, the, the dog's ticket, the medicals. And then, upon arrival, you should anticipate something. Now, this is the fate of the gods lowercase g um when you arrive i'll tell you this some of the, the the people see dollar signs when they see a labrador they see an imported dog they see dollar signs immediately so they start surrounding they start inspecting they start you know licking their lips you know so you, you should expect to have some money upon arrival uh and they will they will they will want to they will want to push for a vet to show up a vet to perform a check before you leave the airport so i for that i would account for another two three hundred dollars if you're lucky you find someone who will work with you and you could get away with a hundred dollars just give them some tea um yeah, so that that total should put you around two thousand three hundred and forty six dollars. Whereas if you go with the agency, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry about anything. They'll get you import import. Uh, what is it? Import tax, import fee, import document, which. The, the important documents only required if you intend for your, your pet to live um, in the destination, in, in Kenya. So, yeah, so those are the two routes, essentially. And what I found, feel free to correct me, what I found is there's only one airline you could actually use, which is Turkish. So, if you choose to do it yourself, just like anything in life, it comes with a lot more work comes with a lot more work and one might say it might be more re rewarding um, again Europe requires microchipping if you pass through Europe and your dog stays a, a day it requires microchipping so yeah so that's the cost um, about seventy seven hundred dollars through an agency about twenty four hundred dollars if you do it yourself the choice is yours Okay, so a little personal perspective. Ah, I figured it out. This is where I should be looking. I'm looking over here. Um, a little personal perspective on my experience and my motivations. Uh, so those were the facts about what it took. Now, here's a little backstory about my, my slash our personal experience. Um, a loved one in our family passed away while we were in Mexico and we urgently needed to fly to, to Nairobi, Kenya in order to attend the service and be there with some family um, and to, to bury our loved one. So 
because at the time stuff paperwork wasn't in order for my dog it's over there for him to fly i we had to go ahead without him and so shout out to my mother shout out to my sister my brother my father um it took a team effort to get solo <laughs> from from the u.s to here they were they were able to take care of him in the states uh for me uh so that so that our family could go ahead and attend the service and he would come a bit later uh so the, you know there was some additional fees that i had to pay regarding uh you know he had to stay with family the with the, the location required pet fees and monthly pet fees or whatever so there, there were some additional costs not accounted for but i must say shout out to my mom my sister my niece amani uh and my father they are the real mvps uh, they took care of them physically when i couldn't and they allowed us to proceed uh so um yeah so that's a little bit about the backstory but the, now the motivations the motivations essentially were my dogs he's reaching the back end of his life and it was always actually my goal i've been saying for probably five years that i'm gonna get him to our ancestral land for reasons that i shall now explain um i always wanted him to be free i personally never liked the idea of a leash I know you can't have every dog off a leash, but I know my dog can handle be off of, being off of a leash. Um, actually, I would walk around in the U.S. neighborhoods. He was almost never on a leash. And there were many people who were terrified, but uh, there were also many people who also understood and also were people who liked their dog, keeping their dogs off leashes. And anytime we'd see each other, you know, you know, like the black man nod, you give, like you see another black man in a, in a strange place. What's up, black man? That's the kind of relationship we would have. Uh, you see another dog off the leash and you're just overjoyed. Um, I don't want to go into too many details because I, f I feel like there's a whole philosophy and metaphysics behind keeping your dog on a leash and domesticating them to the most extreme end. Uh, but... I'll just say I always wanted my dog to be free, free of a leash. I didn't like the idea of him asking to go potty, him asking to go on a walk, to go hunt. I wanted him to be free and spend the last years of his life, or as much of his life, actually, uh, living freely. Uh, my, my family, my wife, my boys, we traveled a lot of the south, south southern U.S., southeastern U.S., from Texas to Florida mainly, um, with him. So he got to see the ocean out there. He got to see many states. Um, but now he's able to essentially be, be, be free. He's essentially able to be free. And so that was, that was the motivation. I never wanted him to have to ask again to use the restroom. My boy is grown. He's older than me in dog years. My boy is, let me calculate. Man, he like 60 years old in dog years, man. Shouldn't be asking a, a young boy like me to use the restroom, to eat, all of that. I also wanted him to eat fresher and healthier food. Out here he eats fresh fish from the lake. Omena, tilapia, rech. Uh, he eats beef free-range beef you know he eats beans chickpeas rice he's human food and i think in the long term it's healthier for him I, I think it's it's healthier for his psyche his mind his body his spirit to be free you see all this whenever he wants he could just go go to the restroom he could do whatever he wants to do so anywho that was the motivation we went over the financials we went over the circumstance, and now I'm just going to show a little bit of footage um, regarding uh, his arrival. 
This is my first time seeing Solo in a month and a half. And I must say, this ain't that mushy gushy stuff we usually see on YouTube. The pet reunited with the owner, you come running into each other. Nah, none of that. My boy had to go. It had been over 24 hours, no pee, no poop. I did. And it took a while for it to click for me, but when it did, we got to it. This guy asked us to give them water and whatever, and they stuck it here and they didn't use it. It might be wild because of the no, stress and it. It's not that. Uh, oh, no. Don't put your eyes near. Job, uh, I give you. So hold on, I give you. Uh, I really need to Look at how calm he looks. So look. Yeah, yeah. What time? <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll he'll know. Huh? What's up, Solo? He's like, thank God, no, I'm not. So... I know. Yeah. Like he's like. Because he's been sitting there in that bed for a long time. Oh man, I forgot to record. So these guys are scared of Solo. Yeah. These guys are 10,000 pounds and they're scared of this guy. I was going to chase those ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> So the mother was the only one who's not afraid. Mm. But that's because of the baby. The baby yeah. Solo, welcome to Capillo, man. <laughs> this is Capillo. <laughs> Are they afraid of those dogs too? Or no? Cows? These ones? No, no, no. They know them? Yeah. Mm. They're so confused. Wow. This guy is just living life. There's four other dogs on this compound, on these acres, who over time really became good friends with him. From here, Solo continues his own journey towards de-domestication. These guys are still looking at Solo. <laughs> it's okay, guys, he's friendly. He only eats you after you, you're cooked. Hey, before we continue, let me ask you, are you looking for a new opportunity, a new job? Are you on the job hunt? Before we continue, let me ask you, are you looking for a new job, <laughs> a new career opportunity? <laughs> you mean to tell me that you're still out here typing job applications manually, one by one? Oh man, there's people out here using AI to fill out job applications, hundreds, thousands per month. We created a service just for you. Instead of going through the tedious process, the tedious repetitive process of filling out job application after job application, only to be denied in automated fashion, only to receive an automated denial email of your application that you took your sweet and lovely time to fill. Fight AI with AI. Go to AIapply.io and let us handle the job application filling process so you can focus on developing your skills and preparing for interviews. The average job search takes about six months, 11 hours a week, which is around 260 hours. 260 hours of your life that you could get back with $39.99 per month. Go to aiapply.io right now. There's a free trial and get started today.